Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video we'll be taking a look at the Venthyr Covenant for Death Knights. I wanted to take a quick look at each Covenant individually, um, and talk a little bit about the Covenant abilities, the class abilities that you get with it, as well as the Soul Binds that are available within each Covenant. So first up is the Venthyr one, because Venthyr is looking extremely promising for both Blood and Frost, uh, more specifically for Frost. And then depending on how the tuning works out down the line, it is showing some potential for Unholy as well. So for the Venthyr Covenant, you get a general ability, which is Door of Shadows. It's a one minute cooldown, and then when you cast it, you get a little location marker, uh, and then you can activate it, short cast, and it teleports you there. So what is the biggest complaint that every single player has who wants to play DK but doesn't is the mobility. My class is too slow, I can't get to places, blah blah blah. So this solves one of DK's biggest weaknesses and that is mobility. Having a minute cooldown blink, it I think it's even further distance than a, than a mage blink, is extremely powerful for Death Knight. Um, and there will be some soulbind specific traits that you can spec into either give you movement speed to disorient enemies when you land to uh make it instant cast but a longer cooldown so you can modify this um mobility spell door of shadows quite a bit depending on how you prefer to play that's the first big reason why i think venthyr is going to be extremely strong for frost dk the second one is our class specific ability and that is swarming mist so this is an ability that is again on a one minute cooldown and when you press it it creates an AoE effect for 8 seconds, dealing damage to all nearby targets. And more importantly, giving you 3 runic power per target hit, uh, up to 15 per tick. So it's kind of a weird wording because it makes it seem like you can only get 15 runic power total throughout the duration of this spell, but it's actually 15 runic power per tick of the ability. So in total, you can get, if it ticks every second, then you can get 8 times 15 runic power if you have at least 5 enemies. So you can get an absolutely huge amount of runic power by just pressing this one ability. And obviously that has huge synergy for Breath of Sindragosa because you're able to essentially keep up your breath without having to press any other buttons since um, breath consumes almost the same amount as you will be gaining from Swarming Mist. And for blood, whenever you run into a big AoE pack and you pop this ability, you'll be getting a bunch of extra runic power so you can death strike more often. So as you can see, in those two situations, this ability is extremely strong. And for blood, it does have the increased benefit of also gaining 10% dodge chance while you have this uh, active. Obviously for the DPS spec, it's not as important, but for blood, that could come in pretty handy, especially on large pulls. So what about unholy? Well, for Unholy, this ability is good in the sense that it does damage. Uh, it does pretty decent amount of damage. The runic power you get is not all that convenient on Unholy because on Unholy, you only really want a huge amounts of runic power gain on single target where you want to funnel their runic power into your gargoyle. On AoE, runic power tends to be a little bit less useful until you're out of your DND and then you start spamming epidemics. Um, but in general, it's still good because you're getting runic power, you're dealing a pretty decent amount of damage. So it's still good for Unholy, but my main focus for this covenant is definitely on Frost currently. So for single target, um, Swarming Mist is alright. Three, three ticks or three runic power per tick is not that bad. Um, it's just a little bit of extra runic power. But on single target, I think the biggest advantage of of the Venthyr Covenant is this blink. Um, I can't tell you how many times just doing dungeons this came in handy when there's a mechanic that you need to react to quickly just being able to blink out of there is a huge benefit to have. So with the Covenant abilities out of the way let's look at the soul binds. With every Covenant there are three different soul bind characters um, that you can choose from and you can have any of them active and you can also reset their talent tree if you choose it just costs some anima um 
So the first one is Nadia the Mist Blade. The first talent she has is Agent of Chaos. And this is a passive, Door of Shadows disorients all nearby enemies at the target location for 8 seconds when you appear. So that's pretty good for Mythic Plus um, or for PvP. You can use your Door of Shadows as an interrupt, for example. And the nice thing about this talent in particular is that it leads down to a potency conduit, which is the DPS conduit. And if you want to know more about conduits, you can watch my conduit video that I posted yesterday. Uh, the second talent here is Fancy Footwork. Door of Shadows increases your movement speed by 80%, decaying over 6 seconds. I found this super nice. It's essentially like getting a sprint. The sprint that you get from it is like even better than Death's Advance. Um, as far as speed goes But the only downside of this talent is that it leads into an endurance conduit. So you got to choose pretty carefully here uh, Then we have friends in low places you loot 20% more infused rubies and Dredgers throughout Revendreth offer you an expanded selection of goods So this one is kind of like an RP one you just get you can buy more stuff and you get more stuff for your Covenant Hall um, So overall this one won't really have any combat impact then going down to the next row, we have exacting preparation. The benefit of well-fed, flasks, and weapon enchant effects are increased by 15%. That's huge. DKs have really good weapon enchants. Uh, as we know, other classes just get the basic weapon enchant. That's like, all right, but it's nothing crazy. DKs have really good weapon enchant effects. So getting 15% more benefit from them is absolutely massive. Um, again, the only downside of going to this talent is that you need to go through a finesse conduit rather than through a potency conduit. So the potency conduit here leads to familiar predicaments. The duration of incoming uh, interrupt, snare, and root effects are reduced by 25%. So this one should be pretty decent in PvP. Getting 25% less CC on you is a pretty big difference. Uh, then your endurance conduit leads to dauntless duelist. The first enemy you damage in combat is marked as your adversary. You deal 4% more damage to them, and they deal 2% less damage to you. You may only have one adversary at a time. So for boss fights, this might be actually pretty good. Uh, we'll see how the numbers work out between getting um, the, the increased effect on well-fed flask and weapon enchants versus just a flat 4% damage increase. Um, if I had to guess, the enchant would be a little bit better um, for DKs, but there could be a case made for Dauntless Duelist as well. And then going down to the last row, we have Thrill Seeker. While in combat, you gain a stack of Thrill Seeker every two seconds or four stacks whenever you kill an enemy. At 40 stacks, Thrill Seeker is consumed to grant you Euphoria, speeding up everything you do by 20% for 10 seconds. Thrill Seeker decays rapidly after you are not in combat. So this is just whenever you hit 40 stacks, you get 20% uh, boost for 10 seconds. And that is the same effect as Bloodlust. Um, it's just half the value. Um, a stack every two seconds, if you're not killing anything, is not all that quick because it means that you know, you're not going to be proccing this too often. But for example, in Mythic Plus, or any fights where you have adds and you're getting the four stacks whenever you kill something, um, this will be proccing way more often. And I can see this being super useful in Mythic Plus. Next, we have Theodar the Mad Duke. So in the first row, again, these modify your Door of Shadows. So first one is Watch the Shoes. Door of Shadows frees you from roots and snares. In PvP, this should be pretty, pretty good. Um, and it also leads onto a potency conduit, which is super strong. So in PvE, it's obviously not all that useful. Uh, there will be certain bosses and mob mechanics in Mythic Plus that snare you. But in general, this is definitely a PvP trait. Uh, then we have Leisurely Gate. Door of Shadows is instant cast, but its cooldown is increased by 30 seconds. So this one is absolutely massive. So being able to just instantly teleport when you need to, um, it's super useful. Generally, the extra 30 second cooldown that you incur will not really be all that big of a deal. Um, I feel like this is going to be more situational than an everyday um, soulbind trait that you would use. But for example, on bosses like Nazoth, for example, 
uh, where the beams come out and they rotate and you have to rotate with them. And if you mess up, you're going to get feared. In situations like that, and on mechanics that work similarly, this trait is super, super good. Uh, then in the tier two row, we have a refined palette. The effects of combat potions last 20 to 100% longer. So I haven't really checked what combat potions we have yet, but if it's going to be strength potions uh, primarily, then this could be super useful. Um, also, if the potion duration is going to be a minute, like it is on Unbridled Fury, for example, then again, this is absolutely insane. Uh, then we have Soothing Shade. Your spells and abilities have a chance to call Tubins and Goobins to your side for 12 seconds. Uh, parasol in hand. Standing in the shaded area grants you 10% mastery. So it's just going to be essentially a proc, and you need to find the right area to stand under. Um, and you get 10% mastery. So for Frost Decay, mastery is typically our highest value stat. So that already tells me that this is super good for Frost. Uh, so whenever you proc that 10% mastery during like your Breath of Syndragosa, for example, that is a lot of added value that you're getting. Uh, then we have Token of Appreciation. Grants a shield that absorbs 532 damage to allies who aid you with healing or beneficial magic effects. You will only shield each ally once every 20 seconds. So this is kind of the defensive trait in this row. Uh, might be good if you're taking a lot of damage and you need it for survivability. Um, or I guess if you're a tank. But for both of the DPS specs, I definitely think we'll be either be going with Soothing Shade or the Refined Palette Talents. Uh, then in the second to last row, we have Life of the Party. During the Ember Court, which is one of the events that you can do at max level, your guests gain additional happiness for each event completed. When the court concludes, the effect of any decrease bestowed upon you are increased. Um, so not much usefulness for Raid, I don't think, uh, because I don't think the effects you get from the Ember Court actually persist. But for Open World, uh, this might actually be pretty good. Then we have Impeccable Style. Theotar will cover the cost for your transmog. Obviously, this is the best talent they've ever made since you gotta look good. So, since you're transmogging a lot, you don't need to worry about the cost anymore. Um, and then we have Exquisite Ingredients. Theotar will send you an assortment of flavorful herbs uh, when you complete activities that contribute to your great vault. So, in each Covenant Order Hall, um, I'm just gonna call them that. There is a great vault where you can deposit reagents, and this just gives you extra reagents to deposit. Um, the last talent for Theotar is not yet implemented. Um, so far, the other talents in for him particularly look pretty decent, uh, but we'll have to wait on the last one, and of course I'll update you guys whenever they do implement that. Moving on to General Draven. So in the first row, we have Anima Infusion. Earning Anima improves the, your armor's remaining durability. So you pay less durability whenever you do open world stuff. Um, Expedition Leader. Leaving a resting area increases your mounted speed by 10% and your out-of-combat regen by 100% last 10 minutes and completing a world quest refreshes the duration. So this is super nice for world questing um, or if you're doing any open world content. Um, just move around faster, which is always nice. Then we have Built for War. While you are above 80% health, you gain 1% strength every 3 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. If you fall below 50% health, this effect is lost. So, typically you're above 80% health most of the time, and then you fall down, you get healed back up, and you stay at 80% health or higher. Uh, back in Legion, there was a Trinket, whose benefit you would only get above 80% health. That was really bad on progress, obviously, but then on farm it became quite good, actually. So, similar situation here. Then we have superior tactics. Successfully interrupting an enemy or dispelling an ally increases your crit chance by 10% for 10 seconds. This may only occur once every 30 seconds. So, we'll just have to see on paper what's better, interrupting every 30 seconds to get 10% crit, or just having 5% extra strength, but currently my choice is between these two. Uh, and then we have Hold Your Ground. Standing still for at least 4 seconds grants you 10% increased stamina and 4% increased healing done. This effect persists for 4 seconds after you start moving. So for tanks, uh, especially on bosses where you're standing still a lot, this might be quite good. 
Then we go through two conduits to the second to last uh, talent row. And here we have Enduring Gloom. Door of Shadows grants you a shield that absorbs damage equal to 15% of your maximum health. And this lasts for 8 seconds. So this could be quite alright um, as a defensive trait. Um, and then we have move as one. When a nearby ally gains a temporary increased movement speed, you also gain the benefit up to 30%. So if a rogue sprints, for example, you also get some of that benefit. And then in the last row, we have call to action. Swarming Mist grants you 10% versatility um, to you and 4% versatility to up to four nearby allies. Lasts for 10 seconds. So for Mythic Plus, this could be quite nice. Swarming Mist is a 1 minute cooldown and it lasts for 8 seconds. So every minute, 10% verse is not bad at all. Um, it's better than most trinkets that are typically out there. But yeah, that was my video for the Ventir Covenant, guys. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one with the rest of the Covenant information. Bye-bye.